So my name is Kuna Brandt. I'm working for uh, Brockmann Consult. And I'm here with my colleague, Tonio, who's in the back and who's engineer um, in what we call the Analysis Ready Data Group. And what we you hear in a few seconds about is uh, our one of our main software developments of the last years. Uh, it's a package called Xcube, and it's actually developed by um, the entire team um, and uh, the main architect and, and let's say inventor of it is Norman von Ferrer, who's not here today. So I bridged another 30 seconds, but I still don't see the slides. Looks good. <clears throat> Ah, there we go. And um, besides the, the general intro and what we call our ecosystem so far, we, you will also hear about um, what we're doing in the framework of Open Earth Monitor with the software and also what are our plans because we're in the middle of it. So at the very beginning, and I think that's a very common challenge that we have heard about also in the introductory talks by, by Yuya and Anka and Tom and everyone is, is well aware of it, that somehow there's an issue with um, simple access and um, convenient ex exploitation of, of a growing number of heterogeneous data in all kinds of different locations. So that's probably the, the common, common topic that every one of us uh, somehow brought us here. And that's not only true for Earth observation, but also other sources. And actually, when we started, we had a very specific task. We were tasked to build a, a data cube of, of uh, I think, in the end, 80 plus variables um, for an ESA project called CoupleUp. That was, I think, eight years ago. And we had some constraints and requirements, and I somehow boiled them down. So it should uh, be a free solution, versatile, extensible, scalable, and building on a common technology stack. Um, so we are a small company. We don't want to build island solutions that no one can use. Um, and this very specific task uh, was has been growing uh, over the years into a, a very generic solution. So that's, let's say, the current status of it. That's what we like to term ecosystem. Maybe it's a bold statement to call a thing ecosystem, which is uh, basically a software package. But we work with that in, in very different um, contexts and, and activities. It heavily builds on the open science, uh, open source uh, data science stack of Python. So first and foremost, X-Ray, Dask, Zar, that you probably um, have heard of. And in this um, presentation, we will go through these different components. I briefly introduce them uh, from, let's say, bottom to top. So you have these various data sources in these uh, um, blue cylinders at the, at the bottom. And we build basically um, pieces of software that, that facilitate the access to them. So what is what we call data stores. And we have data stores for all kinds of different um, sources and services. We even have a, a geographical database that contains non-raster data, so feature data. And then uh, one layer above, there's this uh, Xcube service deployment. So you may, if you start from the left, um, generate data cubes from heterogeneous and, and maybe a data that has some overlaps and gaps. So you, we, we build consistent cubes um, via cube gen recipes if you want to apply some processing. And then there's this large yellow box, um, which is our Xcube server with, this, uh, with its extensible framework. And we have um, quite a number of, of different APIs um, by now. One of our main workhorses is the Xcube viewer. You see on the top right one, one screenshot that um, actually that's where the Xcube server idea started. We needed a backend for a, a web viewer. Um, on the very left, I added this box rather recently because um, we internally also use um, some, let's say, traditional batch processing, thematic processing with uh, Snap, for example. Um, and we directly output these, these uh, cloud optimized uh, Zark cubes as well. 
And then on the very top, there's the exploitation layer. Um, there's an XGroup toolkit, which is a Python SDK, and uh, the entire Pangeo stack I mentioned before is, is of course, fully compatible with that. Um, you may also have third-party uh, applications uh, through this different APIs you see there. So there's a QGIS uh, screen job, but there are also uh, many other applications that might directly connect to to the viewer, uh, to the server. Um, and we may also see this in this project. So that's the, the, the bottom box, if you remember, the Xcube data stores. So it's an extensible framework with a consistent Python interface and it abstracts from the underlying data source. So the user basically doesn't know how the data is organized, um, in which format, if it's a service or, or simply um, files on a disk somewhere. And it loads the data chunkwise lazily, and we may also write to stores. There's a list of the, the data source that we have at the moment, CCI Open Data Portal. We have been involved in this project, and that was one of the first stores we wrote. There's a, a store for the Copernicus Climate Data Store, the Copernicus Marine Service, the Commercial Sentinel Hub API. Um, we are now working on the SMOS um, store, which turns this uh, discrete global grids into regular grids, but also file system like stores like S3 and file memory uh, and Azure file system. On the right, you see um, a, a simple screenshot from a notebook. So that's in practice, if you're a user using Python SDK, you simply um, open a new store, in that case, Sentinel Hub, you, you configure it. So you, in that case, a bounding box, the spatial resolution, CIS and the time range, and you immediately get a lazy view into the cube, uh, into this archive. In that case, it's a 10 days, 10 time step a data cube with all events. Um, but it's not generated when you open it like this, but it's uh, simply providing you with a with a virtual view and only when it's needed, it's really fetched from the API. So then um, when we started working with these data sets, we also thought about a data set convention so that um, we have some kind of specification that all cubes we build have to adhere to. That makes it much easier for the server and for any other application to work with these outputs. Um, we've done so, so that's a, a public, let's say, uh, it, it's not a first draft, but it's still uh, um, um, in development, I would say. Um, so we have a full specification uh, of how we we built our cubes in, in ZAR, and you see there on these small bullets, um, the metadata and format and, and data model specifications we have in there. So you may visit the website, there's a link on the top right, and comment on this and also um, discuss with us. Um, the last bullet you see there, so there's an, a GeoZAR specification, which is, um, has a different origin, but it, it's very similar. We we figured out, so we did this independently, but somehow we came to a very similar uh, a conclusion. And there's now a, um, a standard working group with OGC that's working on GeoZAR, and our um, data set convention is listed there. And our goal is to keep this aligned so that we don't have more uh, standards and specifications than needed. Um, one of the things we did, you see. On uh, on the uh, on the list of, of specifications, we did a multi-resolution dataset specification. This is an extension to the standard model, if you like. So, because um, our server and viewer work directly on the data, we don't um, we don't calculate image pyramids of diff different resolution, but data pyramids. We um, invented, let's say, multi-resolution. Multi data set, which is quite handy if you want to do some of the operations or try them out on a lower resolution before going full resolution. The price for it is, of course, if you want to store this, um, you need more space. Then Xcube uh, server and viewer. So we have this lightweight server architecture. And the main purpose is that it takes some um, data cubes and publishes them to a growing number of clients. Um, as I said, it started as a backend for the viewer only, but then we extended this via plugins and we have um, a growing number of these web APIs. And you see 
Um, that is, S we have an S3 API, so that mimics an, an object storage, a virtual ZAR API, a, a stack catalog we're working on at the moment. Uh, WMTS is a rather old implementation. OGC coverage is it's one of the latest things we're working at because we are part of this testbed 19 for um, geodata cubes. And we have a, a list of own APIs that we use for the viewer, like time series, places, data sets, tiles, viewer, volumes, all kind of stuff. Um, for this project, for Open Earth Monitor, this compute API is, is probably quite interesting. So um, the ability to, to um, execute some kind of user code in the server and, and then on demand have a, let's say, a value added or a process product. Um, and that's what one of the main things we're working on in this Open uh, Earth Monitor framework. That's the viewer. So that's our one of the main working horses because uh, people like viewers and uh, people like to to see data and and interact with it. So it's a web-based viewer um, for all for all data cubes that adhere to this specification. So they immediately work with this with this uh, um, with this data and the viewer. So for us, it's quite handy. We can quite um, easily deploy. Uh, new instances of this viewer for projects for for just for trying out for showing uh, results. And the Xcube server computes these image tiles from the data directly on the fly from any CRS. Um, we can on, execute on the fly user code, like temporal aggregations. But we want to generalize this in this compute API even further. And we have these image and and time series views. And on the right, you see. Uh, a three-dimensional view, so let's, that's a real data cube view, if you like, from this orange circle that you, you see over the North Sea in that case. We have some feature data overlays, and we did recently some uh, an integration with Jupyter so that you can start this view also from a Jupyter notebook. And we have user management for restricting access if data is not public. So we have some commercial um, applications as well. And that's on the right. The, um, the time series view and uh, Luca may recognize the data because uh, that's uh, from the hydrology 4D project, soil moisture. So you can click on the map and you get the time series and you can click on any of these circles in the time series and get the map back. And as a third one, there's a miss, some error in the slides. I'm sorry for that. Um, that's a screenshot of the viewer inside of a Jupyter notebook. So you simply, um, start a server in the, the Jupyter kernel, and then you you can start a viewer and you can dynamically add your data. So you can work in Jupyter notebooks with um, your data, open it with data stores, do some um, analysis, and then um, look at it interactively in the viewer in your notebook. And then you can close it and it's gone again. And it's working on the resources you have anyway in, in the Jupyter notebook. So last but not least, um, the Xcube toolkit, how we call it, it's an SDK. So basically that's the Python API. If you are in a notebook, we have some, um, let's say convenience functions. This heavily builds of course on X-Array. We didn't invent this all, all on our own, but we had um, the need and some requirements for some typically higher level functionalities that commonly occur when you work with these data. Um, and this is also, of course, growing, and we invite everyone to contribute to this for, um, and we have functions for access, extraction, resampling, regrading, um, masking data, changing the, the chunking of a data cube. We can rasterize feature data to, a, to a, a, a data cube, edit metadata, verify that the data set is actually a cube, um, work with these multi-resolution data sets and more. So that's um, um, that's if you want to have a, the programmatic uh, access to it. Um, if you are a programmer or geek, if what uh, how Tom would call you then. And the, in the screenshot, you see one of these these uh, helper functions. So in that case, we extract the grid mapping from a data set. So we use a in the LC stands for land cover here. So we have some kind of data cube. We say. We want to have the grid mapping of the cube. And in the second line of this screenshot, we, we resample um, a source a cube to a target grid mapping of another cube. So that basically um, includes all the steps that you would have to do otherwise manually. So that's that's the level of, let's say, convenience 
um, this package might provide. So now, now coming to processing, um, that's rather new. I put this under the under development batch there. Um, so we wanted to have a execute specific compute API for submission, executing, monitoring, and cancellation of processing jobs. So that's uh, from the approach is probably very similar to OpenEO. Um, that's only pure Python based here. So um, you see on the right, that's the let's say proof of concept. You you submit a job. Um, in that case, the operation is a spatial subset, and then you get a, a job ID, and it um, uh, results in a in a local subset, ZA, and then you can work with this. But you can think of any arbitrary code that you can put into Python functions, uh, ideally optimized for, for running on DAS clusters, then you can also scale with that. Um, yeah, that's the, the development roadmap. We, of course, need more functionalities in this. Um, and then uh, support this, what I mentioned, these user-defined processes, arbitrary optimized Python workflows that might be executed on a on a cluster in the back um, on the fly. And then we may um, also align with OpenEO processes. Um, so we, we plan to add a, an OpenEO uh, interface to the server so that this is aligned for the user at least. And we add some DAS clusters in the in the back. This is how the architecture will look like. So um, our aim for this compute engine, if you remember the, the proposal is that we have um, this X cube in a container, the entire um, server infrastructure and the, the process in there. So you get a use case specific processing, you have a server and this, this provides you with a virtual czar and uh, via this X cube data stores, we ingest the needed input data. And we may um, use the DAS cluster if this is a large job so that this can be run in parallel. And then um, you can invoke this by using this OpenEO interface. And what you will get is, is a, well, it's a virtual ZAR, or you get also or any other API. So you can um, directly have a Xcube viewer on that and then um, uh, disseminate your result and, and users may interact with that. So that's the the, 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 the grand plan, if you like. Um, and uh, for this, we, we will um, implement one of the, the, the use cases and then see how that works and how it scales. And the idea is in the end that this is in a public Docker registry so that everyone can take this and deploy it and run it on, on, on different uh, regions or different inputs or whatever you like. Yeah, so to summarize, this will be a, a, a Dockerized approach. Um, we will we will strive for an, an example or a demo deployment probably on this uh, Copernicus data space ecosystem because this is the new star, the big infrastructure that everyone will have to uh, interact with. Uh, if you need the access to the data, we will um, have it in a Docker registry and you can pull it and um, everything is already there and then you can simply um, apply it to, uh, according to your needs. So I think the rest I mentioned. Um, we have a, this. Um, we have a, a, a stack store to be developed on the last bullet. So since uh, Copernicus Database ecosystem provides um, all the data in a stack catalog, so it's it's pretty handy to have a store for that, so that you can have immediately um, data cube views into these huge archives. And then we again publish um, the result also via a stack interface. Coming to the end, so um, I said this in the beginning, and and also we heard this in the introductory talks. Um, uh, fairness is a is key here. So this is um, fully open source. So although we are a company, so I have to contradict Tom a bit. Uh, we publish all the code we develop, and also everything we develop here in this project. It's has a permissive MIT license, so you can free to use, reuse, modify um, to according to your to your needs. Um, you may simply contribute, and we are more than happy if someone does so um, via pull requests and simply discuss with us, um, drop us an email, and then see what we can do. And then, of course, um, uh, you can install the, the Python um, package via Conda. It's on Conda Forge. And in the future, you will also have this uh, Xcube in a container offer. 
yeah, that was it from my side. Um, that's the contact email xcube at rockman minus consult e. It will go directly to the team and we will come back to you. And um, I mentioned this also before, but we are very grateful to this open source Python community because we we rely heavily on many packages, but but of course on X-rays are task, I would say, uh, the most. And this would only be not be possible without these um, these great work of others. Thanks a lot. Thank you for the presentation. So I have two questions. It's really nice to see the specification about ZAR because it's a quite new format. And you seem to be like really like advanced in the usage of it, and 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 you said that there is this geo czar specification. Do you think it so? There is some possibility to what you are using as a specification now become like a really like a standard like in the future. So I know that it's it's something that it's kind of beyond of you, but I think it, it if we think about it, maybe in two or three years, it would be really nice to have this as a kind of outcome. Of, of the project if it's possible, because I think uh, it's a quite of a opportunity window as ZAR, it's new and there are different ways we structure the data. And the other is uh, it, you can also provide the data as like, a, like you can, you, as far as I understood, you, you have the data in the uh, X cube, but you can have like it is exposed as a stack catalog serve the data. It? Yes. Okay. So both, yes. In short, um, I think the OGC's idea with the Senate Working Group is to to arrive at some point at some kind of standard, and we are happy that it uh, that they have taken up this, and we probably will have to align with them. Or I mean, they they are reading our convention, and and they may uh, take over some of the things we we propose there. We may be a bit too specific for a general standard because they need to be a bit more flexible, I guess, or more generic. So what we will end up may be that we will have a bit stricter convention than the standard, but we are compliant. That's that was at least our wish. And I'm pretty sure that there will be a, a standard for this, which will be great because if all data sets will be somewhat compatible and you could develop software for it. Um, yes.